Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous videos, we saw that there was a discrepancy between the temperatures predicted by the temperature models and the temperatures that we actually measured. And at this point, most of the models seem to be much higher in their predicted temperatures than what we see in the actual temperatures. Then we also saw that we, when we increase the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere because of various factors, including overlap between water vapor and carbon dioxide, and also realizing that the first 20 parts per million accounted for at least half of the temperature increases based upon the increase in carbon dioxide, it didn't appear that carbon dioxide was a very strong driver of the temperature. And the climate models then, then uh, took into account that if there were some increases in temperature because of carbon dioxide, it would drive an increase in the water vapor and therefore a further increase in the temperature. But that doesn't seem to be happening. So what we should do now is kind of look back in history. We have some countries that have very good data records uh, when they recorded the temperatures in, in many of their uh, weather stations. And those two countries are the United States and Iceland. There's a few more, but the, re the weather records or the temperature records, I should say, of the United States and Iceland are really prim, uh, prime compared to many other countries in the world. And so if now compare the increase in carbon dioxide levels since about the 1920s to the current levels from about 300 parts per million to about 400 parts per million, that's a significant increase. And then if we also realize that in the lower troposphere, the TPW, the total precipitable water content in the atmosphere, has indeed increased from about 1.9 centimeters to about 2 centimeters at least in the lower troposphere, although in the higher troposphere there's actually been a decrease but I would say that the lower troposphere probably has the highest effect on the temperature because that's where the initial uh, uh, heat uh, absorption from the, from the radiation of the surface of the Earth uh, is affected. So now when we look at the temperatures in these two countries, notice that in the 1930s it became very warm in the United States. That was the days of the Dust Bowls. And it turns out that 25 states of the United States set their all temperature record, their hottest temperature record, during the 1930s. Then it became significantly cooler and then the temperature went up again. And the current temperatures today are relatively similar to what they were back in the Dust Bowl days. Although, if we take a look at the, the temperatures, it's probably a little bit cooler now than it was back in the 1930s. But ne nevertheless, there was a significant increase in the temperature right here. And about uh, in the last 15 years or so, there hasn't really been a lot of change except for four or three main El Ninos, one in 1998, one in 2010, and one in 2016. Other than that, the temperature in the last 15 years has been relatively stable. It seems to be kind of contradictory to what we see in the increase in the carbon dioxide levels. When we go to Iceland, we see the very same thing. Back in the 1930s, it was very warm in Iceland. Much of the Arctic Ocean had the ice had been melting back. Then it got very cold. Iceland experienced some of the coldest years between 1960 and 1966 the coldest years in the last 100, 120 years, and then it became warmer again, just like it did in the United States and just like it did in much of the rest of the world. However, if we compare today's temperatures to those in the 1930s, in most of the countries where we have very good temperature records, it doesn't appear like there's any significant increase that could be contributed to anything that's happening in the atmosphere. So that's kind of a mystery, something we still need to work out. We definitely do know that there's been a recent increase in temperature, but nothing like what we've seen in the 1930s. So what's really going on? Well, we're still researching that and we're still trying to figure it out. But at least at this point, we can say that it seems that we're seeing from a quantum mechanic position and what we see from the relative increases in the temperatures that we've seen, there doesn't seem to be that strong relationship between carbon dioxide levels and those changes in the temperature. Well, Future will tell to see what will happen.